Haters, what's up? It's Allie Hardesty, and today's video is going to be a 2017 year in review. I was debating on whether or not I should even film this video just because I know it is now in January of 2018, and I decided that I really didn't care if people are over the whole last year kind of videos because I wanted to be able to look back on this and reflect myself, and a lot of stuff happened last year that I didn't really share on my channel, things that I just sort of kept in my personal life and off social media, good, bad, ugly. So you guys may learn some things about me that you didn't know before before in this video, you also might get some questions answered or clarification on events that happened and that I never really talked about afterwards. This is going to be kind of spilling the tea on not only myself, but other people, not in like a spiteful way, but this is just one of those videos where I am not going to hold back and I'm just going to be brutally honest here. Also, I do want to apologize for this weird backdrop. As you guys know, I am currently in the process of moving, so it may look a little weird for a while. I'm literally sitting on the floor, which I never do. But without further ado, let's just get on into this video. The new year started out pretty good for me. And 2017. I actually hit 100,000 subscribers January 17th. A huge part of that was definitely thanks to Shane Dawson. If you guys didn't know, I did a conspiracy theory about him and some other YouTubers. He reached out to me asking to feature me in a video where he would Skype me and ask me about the conspiracy. I gained a bunch of followers that same day and the next day and I hit 100k. It was basically the best moment of my life. I've only been doing YouTube for a couple of years, but I really saw a lot of growth throughout this year and I really felt like I had more of a grip on what I was doing and I chose to expand a lot of my content. This year I started Drive With Me's, the ADHD videos, and I really only have you guys to thank for all of that. Thank you to everybody who has supported me and followed me thus far, and you're a real OG subscriber. Also beginning of 2017, I was really, really sick. I didn't have like some specific illness, but I was just constantly sick. I felt like I could never get a break. This sort of carried on from 2016. I was in and out of urgent care for bronchitis, for strep throat, for just all these different things, and they told me it wasn't normal. They gave me all these antibiotics, and then it finally got to a point where I felt like I was almost immune to the antibiotics because I had taken so many of them for the same things that I kept catching. There was one point where I couldn't even speak. I was so sick and even when I was healthy throughout the breaks in between those illnesses, I always had a constant cold. I was just in this weird sick rut for the longest time and it was something I had to sort of adapt to. February was good. Then come March, I had been in a relationship that you guys may have seen a little bit of on my channel from 2016 and we broke up and this is something that I definitely don't talk about on my channel. I try to respect privacy and things like that. So I'm not going to get too into detail, but this will come up later in the video as well. This was a huge adjustment for me because I felt like I had always been in relationships my entire life. I had a lot of me time. I had a lot of free time. I had a lot of friend time. I felt like I found myself more than ever. I was focusing a lot on my content and school saying yes to things because a lot of the time I'm that person who will just stay at home and like make an excuse not to go out. On the contrary to that, no longer being in my comfort zone. I also started to see a lot of people's true colors, people I had been friends with for for a while throughout college, but we're spending a lot more time with one-on-one -on -one or going out to parties. And there was a situation which I won't talk too much about because this could be its own video where I was technically evicted from this apartment. It was really bad. To give you a quick rundown, I had a friend, she had a boyfriend. Boyfriend was a little crazy and she was basically hiding in my house from him and he proceeded to try and break down my door and was yelling things and he was belligerently drunk. I had to call the cops. He went to jail. The friend, she was staying with me. I was trying to be there for her and then the second he got out of jail she went back to him and then tried to flip the whole situation onto me because they were getting evicted from their apartment even though I didn't call the police on him at their apartment it was at my apartment my apartment thankfully let me stay because of the unique situation but they literally called me and they told me that I had 30 days to move out and that this was a final notice I definitely learned that you can't always go out of your way for people who won't go out of their way for themselves you can't save people who don't want to save themselves shortly after this another friendship I had had for a while that and did because that friend had like done some shady shit behind my back with a boy while well, she had a boyfriend and it got back to her boyfriend she blamed the whole thing on me saying that I made it up I have no reason to make up you cheating on your boyfriend and I wasn't even out there telling people he just found out from somebody else I don't know who we never spoke again after that I couldn't even defend myself because she blocked me after sending this long text that obviously her boyfriend was reading as she typed in order to save her relationship if you want to cheat on your boyfriend if you want to do whatever that is between you two that does not involve me but don't throw me under the bus because you got caught and that was like a guy I specifically told you not to be with because there was some history there and you knew my feelings for that person and I literally cried to you about it the day before you went and did what you did and I don't even know exactly what happened but all I know is that is not a friend. That's the tea on a couple friendships that went down back to back in March and I hate to be this person or even say it like that but I also started to notice because of my growth on YouTube a lot of people were treating me differently and at the end of the day you can tell if someone is genuinely happy for you and your success and some 
supports you and if somebody is envious or feels entitled to the things and the opportunities that you have and will try to gain off of you. Definitely experienced a lot of that in some small ways, some big ways, and it made me kind of stop wanting to go out as much and talk to new people because I felt like they always had ulterior motives and a lot of that was true a lot of the time. Sometimes people don't. Sometimes you have to give people the benefit of the doubt, but I saw a lot of that and I didn't like it. Now we're in April. I think this is around the time I went to Arizona. This must have been my spring break. I went to Phoenix Lights and I want to talk about festivals, raving, that whole culture for a minute. I made a video around this time talking about why I really liked festivals. People get mad when I say raves, but I like to call them raves. How I liked raving and I liked going to those events, but at the same time I had sort of a love-hate relationship with it because I had seen a lot of stuff and I'm gonna be honest, I had a very negative connotation of all of that. I did just from my previous experiences up until that point. And I mean, I guess if you go to your first festival and you literally see your friend overdosing and like in the hospital, that'll do it to you. But I realized that everything in life is a decision. You could say that about YouTube or college parties or a lot of things. Experiencing a festival like that in a different state with different friends was really cool and it gave me a different perspective. And I really fell in love with the music. Up until this point, I liked the music, but it wasn't something I chose to listen to outside of being at these sort of festivals. Now it's basically all I listen to. I love EDM, I love bass, I love all those sort of vibey type of artists. Like, I don't think I listened to anything I listened to before, really. Going to Arizona was really cool. It was exciting to travel by myself. Around this time in April, I also started doing some photo shoots. This is something I had done before, but like not really. I started doing photo shoots with like complete strangers, people that I became friends with in my area. I would get hit up on Instagram, and this may have been because my Instagram was growing a little bit, or I don't know, just because one photographer found me and then other people would find me through them. It definitely became a big part of my life, just here and there, going out and shooting and making friends that way. Around this time in April, also leading up to April, but April is where it got pretty bad. The ad apocalypse was going down. I'm not going to talk about this forever because I'm sure you guys are kind of up to date at this point. They basically changed the YouTube algorithm. No one was getting notifications. Videos were not going in people's sub boxes or on the homepage. We weren't getting promoted and no one was making money. So everybody was freaking out. Like, are we going to lose our jobs? Are we going to lose our platforms? What are we going to do? How are they going to change things next? I decided to make a Patreon. It's just a really cool way to interact with people personally and you get to put your own rewards as whatever you want. So everybody's Patreon is different. And I realized after doing all these photo shoots that I could provide extra photos on there. I'm someone who likes to shoot boudoir, Calvin Klein, sort of lingerie. I like to express myself. I think that people's bodies can be art and that's a lot of stuff that I just don't want to throw on my Instagram because it's so public. Then I made a private snap. Then I started doing unseen footage montages on there. At this point, I have a private kick messenger. I do Skype calls and I check it every single day. I'm so thankful I have Patreon and it's also allowed me to just branch out more and be more creative around this time of year. This is like May-ish now. I finished up my semester at Shasta College and they told me I only needed one more semester in order to get my associate's degree. It was honestly one of the more difficult semesters I've had. I was really thankful I passed everything. I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to. Towards the end of May, I went on a camping trip for my friend's birthday with a bunch of people out in the woods with no cell reception. It was definitely an experience. I think a big part of the reason why I had such a bad time camping like that was because I was not taking my Concerta. If you guys don't know, I have ADHD. I take Concerta every single day on prescription for that to help me focus. And my mindset was like, okay, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'm not going to be driving. I'm not going to be working. Like there's no reason for me to take this. And I had a come down. I was literally hallucinating. I was having panic attacks, anxiety attacks. And I didn't know why, because for some reason I didn't relate it back to not taking my medication for consecutive days. Because if you do that, you're supposed to wean yourself off of it. Like take half of it, take a quarter of it. I don't know. Just don't stop taking it cold turkey like that. I just didn't take it for four days and then was wondering why I was having all these panic attacks. Literally seeing stuff that wasn't there. That was very eye-opening knowing that the prescription I take could do that to my body. Around this time, my mom also came out to visit, which was really cool because I have lived in Reading for two and a half years and I've never had anyone visit me. I've had friends visit me, but none of my family members. If you guys don't know, my family lives in Ohio. She got to see my place. She got to see the area in which I live in. June, a lot was going on. I went to EDC. I went to VidCon. I met you guys. And EDC, oh, I could talk about that for days. The main thing I got out of EDC was that you cannot leave McDonald's out for three days and then eat the meat raw. And you can't basically eat a lot of the food in Vegas because we got sick from Chick-fil-A too and that wasn't even food that we left out. I was projectile vomiting for around three days. We both were. We couldn't even keep down water. I 100% should have gone to a hospital, but there was no hospitals within close radius of us at all because we were driving from Las Vegas back to Orange County. Then VidCon, I got to meet all you guys, which was so much fun. I honestly didn't expect anybody to like know who I was or talk to me or want to take a picture or hug me, but a lot of you guys did. VidCon was like my first real experience 
experience meeting a mass ton of you guys. Also at VidCon, I had an experience with another YouTuber, which I made a video about. That was my first experience getting a lot of hate for something specific like that. His fans, his subscribers were coming for me. I was called a liar. I was accused of making this up, even though a lot of people were there and knew what happened and there were like low-key receipts. So then I made a part two video trying to defend myself, which I really didn't want to do. And not as many people saw that. So my name wasn't really cleared, but it's whatever. At the end of the day, if you know what happened, then that's all that matters. And I know that my story definitely helped some people at the same time. So it was worth it. I don't regret talking about it. End of June, when I was back from all this traveling and vacation before going to Ohio, I had like a week break and I started to make a lot of really close friends where I lived who were not the friends I had before. People who I kind of knew, but just started getting a lot closer with. It was summer, we were going swimming, we were going adventuring. And during this time, I had been talking to this guy. I'm not gonna really talk about this because I know this person wouldn't want me to. And it honestly was super irrelevant. I talked to this guy, we officially dated for a day and we broke up and it was bad. And my two best friends at the time, not the ones I had mentioned earlier that I wasn't friends with, but the two girls I had been like hanging out with nonstop up until this point. One was my next door neighbor and then the other one was temporarily living there too. So they were both technically my next door neighbor. I made a video about that. They did some shady stuff involving the guy and I was just so done. I was not having it. There was weird stuff leading up until that point where I felt like I was just being used a lot and treated really bad. I was almost kind of looking for a reason to cut these girls off because I knew they weren't good people I wanted to surround myself with. And I've talked about this in recent videos on my channel, listening to your gut. And this was a situation where I tried to listen to my gut, but it was weird because they lived next door to me and they were like my best friends. I didn't want to think that they were capable of doing the things that I knew they were and they did do to me. There was also a situation with a subscriber where I was being stalked really bad and they were sort of involved with that and they were taking money from him. I learned a lot from that experience as a whole. It was a subscriber, but that doesn't make it okay. Anybody could be subscribed to anybody. Someone could be a mass murderer and I'm not gonna be like, oh, it's fine because you're a subscriber. Like, no, I need to differentiate the two and I had a really hard time doing that because I felt like I owed this subscriber something because they were a subscriber and they supported me and they supported my channel and they did a lot for me, but a lot of it was very unwanted, like unwanted gifts that were sent to my real address. There were a lot of lines crossed, a lot of boundaries that were crossed and it got to a point where I was like literally crying myself to sleep about it, scared and wanted it to end. I didn't know how I could get it to end. And these friends were doing nothing but escalating the situation because they were enjoying all that they could gain from it, if that makes sense. That subscriber stopped supporting me because he became friends with like the friends I was no longer friends with. The relationship ended. That lasted for five seconds anyway. And I'm glad that I did not continue to pursue that because I was living the single life and I was having a good time. Like I mentioned, at the end of the day, I was really happy it happened the way it did because I just honestly needed all those people to get out of my life. And it blew up at once and I was able to successfully accomplish that. And then I went straight to Ohio. So I was able to distance myself from it, which was really good for me. Around this time, I started to look in the mirror and realize that I wasn't happy with my body. I was binge eating and stress eating a lot. I've always been the kind of person to go into my kitchen at 2 a.m., make all the food I possibly can and eat it all in one sitting, then go to bed. And I always thought that because I wasn't starving myself or purging afterwards, that was fine. That was healthy. That was normal. But it's honestly not. I didn't need that many calories. I wasn't even hungry majority of the time I was eating that way. And I wasn't going and exercising properly. I've always been someone to have a fast metabolism and been relatively fit, but that's still not something I should have been doing. And it caught up with me. Maybe not in a way that other people would have noticed, but I could definitely notice it in my body. I started limiting my calorie intake. I know some people say that you shouldn't do that, but it was nothing crazy. And I was literally eating like so much more calories than I should have been. And like I said, if you're not even hungry and you're eating, like stuffing your face, that's an issue. I started hitting the gym. And a lot of this was also in part, I believe, because of the food poisoning I had at EDC it scarred me. It made me not want to eat meat at all. So I was already forced to make different sort of eating choices. That started slowly in July and into August and September, I was really happy with my body. I came back home from Ohio and I had about a month until school started again. I wanted to still adventure. I wanted to get out there. I wanted to have more summer fun. I wasn't ready for school to start again. So I went to the coast with some friends. I did a lot of exploring in the Reading area and the Bay area. I made a point to go to every waterfall I could possibly find in Reading. And then a week before school started, which was mid-August, I went to something called Organic Fest. It's this festival in the middle of nowhere, pretty much. And it was camping. As I mentioned earlier, I had a really, really bad experience with camping, but I now know that a big part of that was definitely from the Adderall withdrawal. I just took a leap of faith and I decided to go anyways. And it ended up being one of the best decisions I've ever made. Truly one of the best weekends of my entire life. By the time I left, I didn't want to leave. I wanted to stay in the forest forever. My friends and I were literally bathing in the river, like washing each other's hair in the stream. Then I 
started school again. This was going to be my last semester before getting my associates. School has never been easy for me, so I was really proud of myself for sticking with it. In September, I ended up collabing with Shannon Rose. I remember she reached out to me and I was shook. And it's weird to think about that now because I consider her a friend, almost like a YouTube mom. But at the time, I remember thinking, okay, if Shannon knows who I am, then I must be growing. Like, I must be doing decent with my channel. Like, that's crazy. I love collabing with other YouTubers. I ended up doing a lot more collabs the following month, too. In October, I collabed with Joe Hall, Brooke Howes. Also in this month, I went to Nocturnal Wonderland, which is a huge rave in San Bernardino, and we also camped there. I had some new neighbors move in to my complex. I started hanging out with them a lot, and I just felt more of a sense of community living here than I ever had. Also, something that happened in September, I ended up running into my ex, the one that I mentioned in March, and we hadn't spoken in, like, months. Like, all throughout the summer, really, impulsively ended up getting back together soon afterwards, like, come October and stuff. I was not super adamant about posting about it because it was very confusing for me. Also, in general, relationships are not something I want to publicly broadcast on my social medias, and I need my partner to understand that, at least at first, until I feel comfortable. Like I said, I don't want to exploit people or get too personal, but I feel like I do owe you guys somewhat of an explanation for that sort of thing because I was posting about him on my channel. October, there was Halloween. I actually went to Florida for Halloween weekend, which was so much fun. I went to go visit my friend Kate and her boyfriend who live out there, and we went to a festival in Miami. And again, similar to Arizona, it was one of the coolest things I think I did in 2017 because I just went ahead, bought a plane ticket by myself. I went to Oregon for a photo shoot with my neighbor, Sarah. Come November, I turned 21. I turned up. I went to the bars. I was able to, you know, buy alcohol legally. I hit 200,000 subscribers. I'm not sure how this happened or why this happened, but I was thrilled. I was overjoyed. My goal was to hit 200k by the end of 2017, and I hit it a month before. Also in the month of November, I went to LA area, Orange County, for Thanksgiving. On the way back, we stopped at San Luis Obispo to see my brother and his girlfriend. We got to go to the beach there and hang out there. Here comes December now. I officially passed all my classes and got my associate's transfer degree in communications. I got accepted to Chico State as well. I went to Ohio and got to see family again for the holidays, which was really nice. Me and that said boyfriend I talked about broke up again. People break up for reasons and you can care about somebody, but you can care about them from a distance. You don't have to be with somebody if the relationship is no longer serving you. That was kind of how my year ended. Honestly, overall 2017 was very positive. It was a year of a lot of growth, not just on my channel, but in my life and in the way that I chose to look at things. And I had a lot of fun. I did a decent amount of exploring, traveling, adventuring. 2018, bring it on. I am ready for all that and more this year. I'm going to take what I learned in 2017 and apply it towards my channel, towards my friendships, towards future relationships. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you are new here, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Also, do not forget to hit my notification bell. You can tap it twice to get all my notifications. That would mean a lot to me. That way you see whenever I post, which is usually twice a week. Follow my social medias. I will have those on the screen. Also, if you guys do want to check out my Patreon that I mentioned in this video, that will be linked below in the description box. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later, all getters. Bye.